Hi guys. In this video, we'll take a look at expanding multiple brackets, Pascal's triangle, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how exactly can we generalize the process of expanding multiple brackets? We have seen how to expand multiple brackets. Let's say you want to expand the product 2x minus 1, and then multiplied by x plus 1, and multiplied by, again, x minus 3. We have seen that we can expand this out, and when we do so, we get precisely 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 4x, and then plus 3. We can apply the same method when each bracket is identical. So if we wanted to expand x minus 2 all cubed, then we can start by writing this as the product of x minus 2 three times. And then we can apply the same process to obtain x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. Now, if the index of the bracket is large, this becomes tedious to compute. Let's say we wanted to use this method to work out x minus 2 for all of this to the power of 10. This would take a very long time using the previous method. We'd like to determine a rule for the expanded expression in this case. So what exactly is Pascal's triangle? Pascal's triangle is a triangular array of numbers, the rows of which have an application to expanding multiple brackets. So as an illustration, Pascal's triangle looks like the following. We have a one at the top followed by two ones directly underneath it to the sides, and then a one, two, one, a one, three, three, one, and then a one, four, six, four, one. Now, in order to form Pascal's triangle, we begin by using ones on each edge. So we start with a one at the top, followed by two ones underneath, and then another two ones like that, and another two ones on this edge, and then finally two more ones there. Then we form the middle elements by adding the two elements directly above it. So here we have the first three rows, and to get the middle element, we have a one, and another one, and we add them together to get a two. We can continue this process downwards until we reach the desired row. Each row has a particular significance. So as before, we have the two, and if we add the one and the two together, we get a three. Similarly, adding the two and the one together gives us another three. The one and the three gives a four. The three and the three gives a six, and the three and the one gives a four. Now, on a different note, let's try expanding one plus x to the power of n by hand for small whole values of n. So to start with, we can consider one plus x to the power of two. And this is quite an easy one to expand out. We have two brackets of one plus x and one plus x. And when we apply the FOIL method, we get 1 plus 2x plus x squared. Similarly, we could expand 1 plus x to the power of 3. This gives us three brackets of 1 plus x. In order to expand this, we start by expanding the first two. And we can use our result above to give that our first two expanded is 1 plus 2x plus x squared. This is because secretly this 1 plus x multiplied by 1 plus x is the same as 1 plus x squared as we had above. And again, we have to multiply this by another 1 plus x. And then by multiplying everything on the left by everything on the right, we will get the following. 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed. Usually in algebra, we leave the coefficient blank when we have precisely one of a term. So for example, rather than writing one lots of a, we would just simply write a. 
but if instead we bring back the ones in front of the coefficients that we would normally leave blank, the pattern of the expansion is clear. Here we have our results from above. We have 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 plus 2x plus x squared. And we have that 1 plus x all cubed is 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed. Now, if we write out the first few rows of Pascal's triangle, we get 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and then 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now notice that if we bring back the 1s in front of the coefficients that we would normally leave blank, i.e. put a 1 here with the 1 plus x all squared, and a 1 here with the 1 plus x all cubed in front of the x squared and the x cubed terms respectively, then notice what we get. We have a coefficient pattern of 1, 2, 1 for the 1 plus x all squared, and that corresponds precisely to the 1, 2, 1 in Pascal's triangle. And similarly, we have a 1, 3, 3, 1 pattern for the coefficients, as we also have in Pascal's triangle. So we can see that Pascal's triangle gives us the coefficients for certain expansions. If we wish to expand 1 plus x all squared, then in order to get the coefficients, we examine the row, which begins with precisely 1 and then 2. So in Pascal's triangle, this is the third row if you let the 1 on its own be the first row, the 1, 1 be the second row, and then 1, 2, 1 is the third row. But in particular, we are examining the row beginning with 1, 2. This is because the 2 is the corresponding power that we are expanding. Similarly, if we wish to expand 1 plus x all cubed, then we look at the row, which in particular begins as 1 and then 3. Again, this 3 is the one which is corresponding to the power that we have. And so we have the row 1, 3, 3, 1 from Pascal's triangle. So we can use this knowledge to expand expressions with even higher index. Let's say we wanted to expand 1 plus x all to the power of 4. Then by using our results above, we need to look at the row which begins 1, 4. So by writing out the first few rows of Pascal's triangle, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and then finally we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This is the row beginning 1, 4. And therefore, our expansion will be, we always start with the constant term as we've done above. So in our expansions above, we start with a 1, that is the constant term. And then the final term, all the way at the other end, is our x to the power of n term. So x squared in the first case and x cubed in the second case. So here we're going to have our constant term is our first term, 1. And then we have a plus 4x, that's our next term increasingly, and then we have our plus 6x squared, our next term, then our plus 4x cubed, and then finally our last term is our 1x to the power of 4. Now again, we could leave this as simply just x to the power of 4. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to compute the whole row of Pascal's triangle beginning 1, 7. Our first step is to fill out the edges with 1s. So we start with a 1, and then we have a 1, 1, and then we spread out, have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Our second step is to recall the rule for progressing from one row to the next. We add the two numbers which are directly above together. Our third step is to fill in the rows. It's important to remember how the first few rows of Pascal's triangle go. Make sure that you leave room for just the one on its own and then the one and the one, and then on the next row, fill in the two. And again, this is in concert with our rule which says that we add the two numbers directly above together. So to get this two, we started with the one and the one and added them together. 
and therefore by continuing we get 3 3 4 6 4 5 10 10 5 6 15 20 15 6 and finally 7 21 35 35 21 and 7. Our last step is to write down the answer. We are looking for the row beginning with 1 and then 7, and so our answer is 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1. Our second example asks us to compute 1 plus x to the power of 5 using Pascal's triangle. Of course, we could spend a long time expanding out each of the five brackets together. But we are asked to use Pascal's triangle, so our first step is to fill out the edges with 1s. So we have a 1, and then a 1, 1, 1, 1. Our second step is to recall the rule for progressing from one row to the next. As we had before, we add the 2 directly above the number together. Our third step is to fill in the rows. Again, we have our 1, and then our 1, 1, and then we have our 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and then 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Our fourth step is to identify the row corresponding to the power. We are looking to expand 1 plus x to the power of 5. And therefore, we are looking for the row beginning with precisely 1, 5. Our fifth step is to write down the useful row. Looking at our Pascal's triangle and knowing that we are looking for the row beginning 1, 5, the row that is important to us is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Our last step is to write down the expansion. Using this row as our coefficients, we get 1 as our constant term, plus 5x plus 10x squared plus 10x cubed plus 5x to the power of 4 and then finally plus x to the power of 5. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.